Welcome back. OSC tutorial this time. Let's start with what OSC is. OSC stands for Open Sound Control, and it's a protocol for sending uh, messages and information between devices on a network. Traditionally, as its name implied, it was used for sound uh, controllers, things that would be used to make electronic music, such as uh, musical instruments, faders, sample pads, drum pads, all those sorts of things. Um, but more recently, we're seeing it used for other items and other things within the sort of computing sphere, including haptics, such as the giggle puck, which is what caused OSC to start being added to Resonite, trace tracking and eye tracking by things like Steam Link and uh, others, and also other peripherals such as heart rate monitors and uh, other activity monitors. Uh, the world is basically endless because it's an open protocol that anyone can use. In this video, we're just going to be doing some examples using a couple of phone apps, and uh, in subsequent videos, if you'd like them, leave ideas in the comments. We'll go into other um, things that you can do. Maybe I'll write some heart rate code or something. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Uh, so follow along with this tutorial, and you should be able to get up and running with just a quick demo to sort of get a feel for how things work. So over here on the Resonite side, I'm going to tab over here. We'll move over in this case to, I need that, never mind. Um, create new empty object. With an empty object added, I'm going to go ahead and add one of the OSC components. There are four OSC components, and I'm going to talk you through each of them in this video. If we go to Network here in the Attach Component dialog, and then OSC, we can go to um, OSC Receiver is what we're going to be using, but I'll talk you through the others. So OSC Receiver allows you to receive data into Resonate. OSC Sender allows you to send data outside of Resonate. OSC Field and OSC Value are the things that you actually use to get and send the data, and we'll go through them um, as we start to use them. So let's focus on Receiver and Sender right now, and as we're receiving data for this tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and add OSC Receiver. The OSC Receiver has a number of fields, and I recommend specifying them in the following order. First of all, pick a network port. This port must be open to your um, computer locally, um, and can't have anything else running on it, like a web server or something like that. If none of that made sense for you, uh, pick a number like 3001. I don't really know why, it's just the, the port that I'm familiar with that all uh, Node.js tutorials use, so that's fine, unless you're running a Node.js server, but it doesn't really matter. Just pick a port, shove it in here. Uh, don't make it too low, though. I recommend above 1000. The uh, second thing you should specify is an access reason, and this will appear in a host access dialog that will appear um, when this connection is established to warn you, like, hey, Resonite's opening a connection, are you okay with this? I've already allowed 3001 through, so we won't see that dialog. And then the last thing it's going to need is a user. I grab this from the user inspector, which you can get to with create new uh, editor user inspector. Uh, other people might use other items, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab and send things in here. So there we go, that is an OSC receiver set up in this session. You can see that it is listening, and it's listening on port 3001. We now need to move over to the other half of the tutorial, which is my phone. And for that, you're going to get a special treat. Here's phone cam, and here's webcam. Uh, so the phone is being mirrored using uh, TeamViewer. If you have a better application in mind for mirroring a computer, do let me know, because TeamViewer can, can be uh, like problematic. It keeps asking me to like get an account and things like that. If you've got a better app in mind, let me know. Uh, anyway, um, you've also got a webcam. Yeah, these are my hands. Hello. Most of my desk is messy. This square I've cleared to be uh, fairly less messy. But there we go. And you'll see my phone. So I have two phone apps that we're going to play around with today. Uh, one is called OSC Control. Um, I found it from Fruxy's original video about OSC support. I will link that in the video description as well. So you know um, both that video and where to find the app. And the second one is Sensors to OSC, which was uh, recommended or suggested by a Discord community member by the name of Whip. And that's available on F Droid, so it's a little bit more complicated, but I'll link the instructions down in the video description to get either of those. We're going to go ahead and start by playing with the OSC control one, which is the one on the right there. Uh, opening this up, we've got a lot of details available. I'm just going to mute and cough. And I'm back. And uh, there's a lot of things here, but I'm going to go through them in the, um, in the order that they go. First of all, the IP address section. That needs to be the local IP address of the um, computer that's running Resonite. If you don't know what this is, I'll put some dis uh, details in the video description. Um, I can't really inform you on how to do this other than read the details in the video description because like, showing you how to do it on my network would be a security issue, as it would probably show my other IP addresses and stuff like that. So I, I can't do that one. The port is um, the port that you want to connect to. In my case, it's 3001, not 30,001. So I'll put 3001 in there. And then the OSC path, leave it um, 
as the default right now, OSC control with a capital C there, and hit start. And you'll see connection started. I usually wait a couple of seconds just to double check that this um, area here, the like gray one with the connection started, doesn't report an error. It's not reporting error, and that means that we are done. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap controls. This um, app has a multitude of controls that we can go through and take a look at. They're really cool, but we're going to start here with the sliders because uh, they're really easy to show you. I'm going to start here with slider one. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and tap this pencil icon and then slider one here, and it's going to open up this um, dialog box that you can see here. And it says address slider one, min zero, max one, label slider one. And what this is telling us is what's called an OSC path, like a full path to a, uh, a number or a value of an OSC. So to access that, we're going to go to attach component network. OSC, OSC value, and then we're going to select a value appropriate for the slider. So sliders use float. I'm going to leave this open because we'll need it in a moment. I'm also going to clear gizmos so they're out the way for you. The OSC value and OSC field component both need a handler passed to them, and this is the OSC receiver or OSC uh, sender that you've uh, hooked up. So for the receiver, I'm going to go ahead and grab receiver and drop it in. Next, it's going to need a path, and that's the path that leads to this value. So the path is going to be that thing that we had on the um, on the start screen, OSC control, and then forward slash, and then the address that's presented here on the um, on the app, which is slider one. We're going to hit enter, and it's not going to work again. Guarantee it. No, it's working. Excellent. So you can see here the slider's all the way at the top here, and it says one. Um, in uh, here, and it says one up there on the app. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, and then we can enter two here and three here. Now, each slider can be changed independently. I didn't hook up slider four. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> So that's uh, receiving that data. Let's try and cover a button. I actually haven't tested these, so it'll be interesting to see. My voice is going, but we'll struggle bus on. Um, toggle one. Oh, that's interesting. We can show you to do a toggle. Uh, looks like this will come in as a number as well, which is a little unfortunate, but that doesn't matter. Um, it also doesn't have to be on the same object here. So to hook up this whole toggle, I'm going to open up another empty object just to um, make some space. I said hoggle there, didn't I? Is that like a toggle that's made by Hodor or something? I don't know. Anyway, moving forward, we're going to go to uh, Attach Component Network, OSC, OSC Value, and we're going to do OSC Value. I think we can get away with int this time. And then we'll need, um, we'll go ahead and grab the path here and grab the receiver. And we need to name this, uh, looks like forward slash toggle one. We'll hit update. Clear the pencil icon, and then I can hit one. Interesting. All right, let's try debugging this live. Uh, label toggle OSC control toggle one. Uh, so if you're not sure what data type it is, you can just try adding the others. So let's do network. Where are we? Network OSC. I think it's string. Uh, string OSC toggle one. Date. Nope, okay, the toggles aren't working either. Forward slash toggle one. I'm spelling that right, aren't I? OSC control, OSC control, OSC receiver. It's all there. Uh, I guess I should have left the video off there, but we'll do live debugging. So I'm also going to go to OSC, OSC value, and grab a float just in case, like, maybe everything is floats in this app. Yeah, everything explodes. All right, uh, I'll look into why uh, where other data types might come into action there. It's probably just either the way that this app is implemented or the way that we're addressing it here. Um, so that's how to receive data. We can also go through some other controls here. Again, I'll do these live, which is very risky, but we'll do uh, slider. Cool, this looks like we'll need two more floats. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those here. And we're gonna to need to be uh, slider two. DX, or it's lowercase x, and then slider to dy. Looks like that should be good. Yep. 
So now you'll see if I'm up in the left corner here, we get zero, uh, zero, 01. If I'm down here, we should get zero, yep, zero, zero. Top right over here, one, one. Hoping that you can see the, the feet, the, you know, the power hit. This is basically a launch pad, right? You could hook this up to gestures and all sorts uh, if you wanted to. What's over here? Or a different layout? This app can probably do a lot more, but I think that'll do it for that app. We'll do another quick demo. Uh, this video is only 10 minutes long. That's great. I hope you've enjoyed the waffling. Um, I'm going to go back to my phone and we're going to go ahead and open up sensors to OSC. Uh, in the host portion, we need to type in that, that IP address as well. Let me just clear these up because those won't, they, those won't work anymore anyway because uh, the, the app's been closed. Uh, so we need this IP address and we'll just type it here. 192.168.174. Okay, and then the port is 3001 again. 3001 in space, Odyssey. Yeah, that's 2001. Um, keep screen alive. I don't know what that is. Send OSC as a bundle, so we'll leave that off just for now. My phone has 2% battery. Let me fix that as a matter of urgency. <laughs> I don't have a cake. <laughs> Um, well, this is why people edit videos, I, I assure you. This is also why I don't edit videos. Because I don't have a cable, but I do have magnet cables. So we'll, we'll plug this in immediately. And we'll plug this in. Hello? Okay, good. We've got power. <laughs> that would have been drastic. Okay, great. So uh, that's the app set up. Uh, and then if we do send data here, that's, that's, that's Google, uh, we can go ahead and start doing stuff. So I've got to be careful here because as you can see how oh, that connection is, magnet cables are just terrible. Don't use magnet cables. Anyway, um, since do I see, where was I going? Oh yeah. Okay. Gyroscope. Uh, okay. So I've got to be careful here because I could dox myself by leaking my actual GPS coordinate here. Um, we could do accelerometer, uh, let's do orientation. And orientation will be that, we want the gyroscope, yeah. Gyroscope, all right, cool. Uh, settings, can you tell me? <laughs> can you tell me the data structure of these or is it just gonna be like, yo, All right, we'll just we'll just go ahead and try it. Uh, so we've got a gyroscope value here. Uh, so again, you've got this open. Um, this is connected to it. It's sending data. Let's try and figure out what's going on here. So network OSC OSC value. Uh, I guess it's a float, and um, we'll try and get data from the gyroscope here. So gyroscope. something. I don't quite know what it is, but it's something. You can see it's it's responding to the, the phone's orientation there. Let me see if we can figure out this a little bit better. Uh, we could also do accelerometer here. That'll be, uh, could that be one? That doesn't really make sense, but uh, here we are. Okay. Accelerometer. There we go. So if I move this quickly, you should see the number go up. Yeah, you see that negative large number? That's when I shake the phone to the side there. Ooh, pressure. So pressure would be the like barometric pressure sensitive. There's a gravity sensor. I, I gotta see, like it, it says forward slash gravity. Okay. Forward slash gravity. I don't know. I'd have to read the um, the application page for this to understand more. Uh, I'll put the link to it in the video description and you can play around with it. Um, and uh, I'll head off here because we've got 2% battery and this magnet cable isn't going to last. I hope that's uh, helped. I'll do an OSC sending video maybe tomorrow as it's quite late and I'm obviously needing to charge my phone and do some research here. If you want to see any particular sensor in here covered in a future video, do let me know. I'm sure people will figure it out now I've pointed you in the right direction. Let me know what gravity is, because it's negative 0.04 right now. See you again next time.